Hello, I'm Miss Johnson and I'm going to be talking about my top five LGBTQ plus authors for Pride Month. Now it was really difficult to sort of narrow down my choices to just five writers from across the centuries, but I've, I've managed to do it. That said, the first author that I've chosen is a bit of a cheat. Um, we know very little about her life and it's a question of whether she was um, gay or not. But given that she is the reason why we have the word lesbian, it seems um, odd to miss her off the list. And if you don't know who I'm talking about already, it is Sappho. So Sappho was a, a Greek writer. She lived around 600 BC on the island of Lesbos, just off the coast of modern day Turkey. And she wrote a, a series of poems, few of which now survive in their complete form. Um, but a lot of these poems talked about her, her love for other women. And a particular favourite of mine is one that begins by saying, you know, I think that man is a god. And you imagine it's going to be a, a traditional heterosexual love poem, but it's not. The Sappho is, is envious of this man, not because she wants to be with him herself, but because he's able to talk so calmly and so coolly with the girl that Sappho um, is interested in. So we're going to jump um, across the centuries now for my second author, who is the, the Danish fairy tale writer Hans Christian Andersen. So Hans Christian Andersen is perhaps most well known for writing the original story of The Little Mermaid. And indeed that story, that fairy tale, has been seen as an allegory for Andersen's own sexuality. The idea that the mermaid has to give up her voice and her powers of speech in order to have a chance to be with the prince is by some um, critics seen as an allegory for Anderson's own feelings of um, muteness and not being able to, to talk about um, his sexuality and his feelings. The third writer I want to talk about is Oscar Wilde, whose complete works are on the shelf behind me. Um, Oscar Wilde is one of the most famous English writers um, ever, um, perhaps most famous for the, the plays The Importance of Being Earnest, Lady Windermere's fan, and also his, his novels, The Picture of Dorian Gray in particular. Um, obviously Wilde had a particularly sad end, he was convicted of gross indecency, the term used then for homosexuality, um, and spent several years in prison, you know, writing his last works, were heavily influenced by his, his time in prison, and then he underwent self-imposed exile in France for the remainder of his life. The fourth writer that I want to talk about is James Baldwin. He is an African-American writer, but he spent much of his adult life in France and his writing life in France. And his most famous piece of LGBTQ fiction is probably Giovanni's Room, which tells the story of an American in Paris who falls in love with a waiter called Giovanni. Um, I mentioned that Baldwin was, was African-American and he spent a lot of his time writing from the perspective of an outsider, you know, the issues of both race and sexuality, but also the fact that he was an expat, an American living and working in Europe. And it's that outsider's perspective that he brings to his work. And the final author that I want to talk about brings us right up to the modern day, and that is Ali Smith. And she has a almost sort of lyrical, poetic way of writing her novels. If you look at her books, you know, the, the right hand side isn't justified. The text just sort of 
stops giving a feel to her work that it is it, you know it looks like poetry um, even though it is a novel um, and Smith is particularly concerned with ideas of, of gender identity in her works particularly her books How to Be Both and Girl Meets Boy both of which have a it's a very interesting take on, on gender. Anyway, those are my choice of five LGBTQ plus authors for Pride Month. I, let me know if there are any others that you think I should have included in this list. <laughs>